talking about what are we going to see? Not going to see the full playbook. That's stupid. And we're going to have stuff which is going to confound people. But I can tell you, I did see a few things. There's segments of the practice, and Carl and I talked about this last week. There's Falcons practice where the media can't have the cameras. Anybody from Channel 2 or from right. WAGA, mm-hmm. cameras have to turn the other way. Sure. You can't see it. There is some really cool stuff in the pipeline, guys. And I probably said too much. But, you know, I did talk about some of the ways when B. John Robinson is is lined up next to Drake Lund, I mean, or even behind him. You know, Tennessee Vols do that stacked formation. Mm-hmm. I mean, imagine the things you can do in one of the practices. It's just one play. I know I've mentioned it a few times, John, but it just looks so cool. And then Kyle Pitts comes across and he's wide open on a crossing route. And it's that you're creating those mismatches with the secondary. Well, and not only that, you're splitting linebackers. Correct. I mean, and you're opening up the middle of the field. And so... Uh, yeah, and then, by the way, that also works for quick hitting running games too. I mean, you could have a you know a fullback trap, and suddenly that's a 10, 10, 11 yard play because there's nobody in the middle of the field once you break the line of scrimmage. So there are a lot of things you could do off of uh, that kind of a, a stack. There's l- little different rotations you can do. I, I do know this because I was talking about Desmond Ritter the other day, and and I know you want to get into Desmond, right. but I got I got something here that I want to say about Desmond. I don't know. I look, I could be wrong. I mean, I was married the first time. Mm-hmm. There was that. Um, so, I mean, I, but I have a sense, without sitting here and saying something, you know, broad, Mike, like, by the end of the year, uh, Desmond Ritter will be the uh, uh, the most uh, prolific starting quarterback in the NFC South. I mean, I'm not saying much. Bryce Young's going to have a rookie year. Mm-hmm. You got Baker. And, and then Derek Carr was, what, what's Derek Carr ever really done? I mean, you, you know. He, he, not won a playoff game. You know. I mean, he's like Dak Prescott. It's the king of the pointless 12-win season because they don't do anything with it, right? I mean, right. so um, the uh, Desmond Ritter, I think by the end of the year, and again, I could be wrong, but I think by the end of the year, there will be no more discussion, maybe by as soon as week 12, no more discussion in Falcon Nation about quarterbacks. We're going to be, okay, th- we're good. We're good for, it's 2023. Talk to me about quarterback in 2032. I think Desmond Ritter could be, He's not going to, he's, he's either going to fail, right? And it's going to, okay, we're back on that wheel again. Or he's going to do what I think he's going to do, which is grab this job, and he's going to own this job for eight, 10 years. And now we can worry about everything else. Yeah, Carl has been on my case because I'm not giving you a full endorsement just from what we saw. But again, according to what was reported down in Miami, he was answering the bell. Uh, Arthur Smith, uh, uh, effusive in his praise of how he's doing the things he needs to do. He's processing what the Dolphins were throwing at him in, in real game situations. So, now, for the fans out there in attendance, or are you just going to DVR it if you got high school football on Friday night? You get a chance to see this, and people are excited. I think people are really stoked about B. John Robinson, but this team is just going to be so much, more, so much more dynamic. And I know you and I spent some time, I think it was Monday, talking about Kyle Shanahan, and, and just he knew what to do, how to dial it in. You know, between what you had with Julio Jones and Sanu and Free and, you know, and, and Coleman, it was just, it was, you, you had that kind of same vibe. I think Arthur's an offensive genius. I think fans are finally going to see it now, John, because I like to say he's got a full toy chest to play with. Mm-hmm, right, hasn't exactly. had that last mm-hmm. two years. Right? No, he hasn't. I mean, again, you're walking into a season where you have Desmond Ritter playing in a regular season game for the first time with Bijan, with mm-hmm. with Cordero Patterson. He you had a little bit with, uh, you know, he never played with Mac Hollins, never played with Kyle Pitts in mm-hmm. a regular season game. So, uh, yeah, Friday night, we, we it is going to be really interesting. I, I have to say that, I'm really going to be focused on the defense. I, I, I know everybody else wants to see Ritter and, and wants to see Bijan and wants to see all the, all the toys. I get it, and, and I do too. But to me, this team rises and falls on that defense. Therefore, I'm really going to be interested. Can we have a pass rush without having to blitz? Yes. That's the biggest question I want to know coming out of this uh, preseason. Can we have a man-on-man pass rush? Can Onyemata uh, chew up a couple of blockers and let uh, Grady uh, Jarrett go to work? Can Bud Dupree, does he have what I think he's going to have in the tank? Well, Clayus Campbell, Arnold Lepigetti, uh, Zach Harrison going to step up and be somebody. D'Angelo Malone, can we have Caden Ellis? Can we have a pass rush that doesn't just tack McKinley and almost get sacks, but actually almost gets sacks and turns the quarterback into another guy who puts him on his butt, you know? Yeah. No, I think we're, you're going to maybe dial up a blitz if you get some, uh, really, let's be honest, some stud offensive lineman that maybe your guy's having a tough matchup with or your guys can't get by. Yeah, there's, there's situations that you're going to dial it up, but... If things go well, to your point, we got enough dudes. We, and 17, like I said, we've got more. Go back and look at names like Babino and Claiborne, all those dudes. That we, we've got guys like that now. Granted, some are on one-year deals, so what? We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out next year. But if Eva Katie pops, if Kate Nellis is doing his job, if uh, if Anderson does his job. All right, let me ask you a question, excited. Mike. Mike, I'm going to ask you a question here. Okay. Just generally and broadly, if you could pick, would you rather have a team in the NFL as a fan that had – the the unstoppable like 2016 Falcons, the unstoppable offense, or would you rather have 
the Baltimore, you know, Ray Lewis, oh my God, kick you in the teeth defense. I got to be honest. I've, I, I've had season tickets for three teams in my life, the Giants, the Dolphins, and the Falcons. And the Giants was always about defense. It was always, yeah, yeah, of course. It was Belichick was the DC, right? It was LT and Harry Carson's and Carl Banks and Pepper, all those dudes, man. You had dudes, man. But anyway, then you get to Miami, and it was all about Danny Boy, and it was all Marino, and it was just in in every net. You knew every triplets and all that. Yeah, Yeah. every year you knew you're going to win ten games minimum. You know, except Shula was too loyal. It's, I'm, I'm going down this rabbit hole. Shula was loyal to his assistants to a fault, and they, they never played defense, and they never had a good running back for Marino. But I digress. So I've seen the offensive side. I've seen the defensive side. 2016, we beat everybody. We got a 10-point lead. Defense could pin their ear backs, and that was our thing. This year, we're going to run the football. We're going to be balanced. We're going to be physical. I think our personality is physical, leaning towards defense. I think even though we've got all these top, you know, top 10 picks that we drafted, and fans want to see these guys put up ridiculous fantasy numbers. We're going to be a physical team. Our physicality is what's going to define this All team. All right, so again, back to the question. It's defense. Is, is, yes, no, I, uh, <laughs> like most fans, I which get Which would you rather have? I like defense. I, I like too. watching guys knock the snot out of people. But right. that's. But let's be honest. That's not what the NFL fan wants. That's not what the NFL is based on. The NFL is based on offense, scoring a ton of points. The fans don't want to know about it, but you still got to have a decent defense. You no, know, I don't know that that's true. I mean, only because you you were a Giants fan. I mean, the Bears, the Bears when they won in 84, I'm going to take you way back. They had Walter Payton, they had Jim McMahon, et cetera, et cetera. But it was the defense. Right. It was Dick Dent. It was that team that was just so dominating you know, on defensively, it's so much fun to watch your club when they every time the other team snaps, they think they're going to get killed. Right. Well, no, I mean, we we talk to Bobby A. Bear all the time, and maybe next time we get Bobby on, he'll tell the story about playing the Giants in the Superdome, Lawrence Taylor at the height of his Lawrence Taylor ness, and you know, Bobby A. Bear basically telling one of his linemen, "Come on, man, you got to pick him up." And the guy literally is crying in the huddle. I can't, I can't, come. I just can't. And Lawrence Taylor is literally doing his impression right. of Forrest Whitaker in Fast Times at Richmond High. Wah! Jefferson. So that's as a fan, as a kid watching that, it was just it's a it lot was, of it's fun, a, dude. It's when a you lot get a of fun. killer defense, it could be a fun and thing to Falcon watch. And Falcon fans don't know this from Adam because we haven't had that on a consistent basis Wait, just, uh, in twenty that, years. No, well, yeah. twenty. How about I mean, I'll go ninety eight. How about the old guy way? in right here, the grid splits in 1977 right. uh, where we had a defense. Go look up at 1977 and see the Falcons year in 1977. Look at the opposing team scores. 7 0 7 7 I mean, nobody scored on us. Right. And we and we blitzed every bloody down and the, the Fulton Kaikadals of the world were wreaking havoc on the other team. That was the grid splits. Yeah, and there's, look, there's been some great individuals that have come through here. Scott Case, oh, Pri- sure. Claude Humphrey, Pride Moore, Glazebrook, of Tommy course. Novus, all these guys that would be you know, Hall of Fame if they played in other cities. But I go back to 98. The bomb squad was physical. That was yeah, physical. the bomb squad was physical. Right? Chuck Smith and Archibald yeah. and Shane Dronet, those yep. guys were physical, man. And then you get back. And you know, then we had guys like Rod Coleman and Patrick Kearney. But, you know, and then the Predator, we had Abe, but we've got to get John Abraham on again, maybe by the end of the week. Yeah, because Abe was a monster. Yeah, but Abe never had anybody opposite him. I know he did. That's the thing that drives you crazy. Can you imagine what the numbers he would have And had? by the way, take a look at Predator. I've said this last time we had him on at the show, and he's a great dude. And he'll be the first to tell you he had his struggles. He's got his life. He's on the rails. He's doing great. Predator, is, he's got to be in the Hall of Fame. I know he played on some uh, some Falcons teams that didn't do much in the playoffs, but this guy was money. Mm-hmm. He went, he did go to an NFC Championship. Right. I agree. And the guy was a stud. And look and look That's at his numbers. That's why I hate numbers. the Hall of Fame because right. I mean it's like yeah really okay whatever. It's so subjective if yeah. you don't have the juice of the big market exactly. or the big media well, coverage or you know I mean not your fault that the yeah. offense couldn't get anything going. Hey, before we break, I want to give you here's here's Ritter. We were just talking about Patrick oh, Mahomes sorry. earlier in the week. Was saying <laughs> oh it's cool. We just kind of it's what we do. We, we you know we go down the rabbit hole. Mahomes talked about needing to get some contact. Some quarterbacks, I know it's tricky for veterans. In this case, here's a guy with four games under his belt. Listen to Ritter talk about how juiced he is to play. Obviously, you know, I'd love to get hit once or twice in that game just to, you know, kind of shake some of the rust off. And I wouldn't say preseason doesn't matter. Um, for me, you know, every single game, every single snap matters. Like I said before, you know, none of, the, none of these games or none of these plays are guaranteed. Um, but for me, you know, it's obviously about going out there and sort of trying new things. Obviously, we do a lot of that at practice. Um, but, you know, it's trying new things but being safe with the ball. There are two types of Falcons fans. One who knows that that's your quarterback and the other who hadn't figured it out yet. Coach says it's this guy, so you better get with a program. And uh, hopefully we'll see some things that everybody will be gushing about for you working on the weekends. And then Carl and I on Monday.